Hey, we're back here in the Porcupine Hills. We've come up here quite a few times for our show, but as beautiful as the landscapes are up here, I'm always disappointed because first off, I've never seen a porcupine up here in my life. I'm convinced there aren't any up here. And when you come in here, you cross over Trout Creek Road. I doubt there's any trout in it. I really do. This place is like Greenland. They just lie to you to get you up here. But when you get there, it's just rock and a distinct lack of porcupines. Welcome back Deep Your View TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here and today I get my hands on the Fujifilm GFX 100S and I say that because if you recall we've already done a first impressions video but I was stuck in lockdown on quarantine, Jordan was out and about shooting a pre-production version of the GFX 100S and I was lamenting how I didn't get to put my hands on it and I'm really excited to play with it. Well today is that day so we're not going to really go over a lot of the specs and things that we covered in that video, I highly encourage you to watch it but more how I I like this camera, how it's working for us out in the field, and anything that we feel we want to add on on top of that review. Now in this video you're going to see me hand holding this camera a lot today which is normally a big no-no with these high resolution larger format cameras because you know any little motion blur shows up in a big way but I do want to really test one of the main features of this camera which is a brand new in-body image stabilizer. The IBIS system in this is only in this camera, it's supposed to be really good and I haven't been able to test it and frankly a camera like this with its compact nature does make sense for a lot of just kind of street photography or travel kind of stuff where you might not always have a tripod but in the sample galleries I'm absolutely going to get this camera on a tripod as well for a lot of shots just so I can see the results from both. This is the part where we wait for the sun to come out, which it has now, and then clouds to be in a nice part of the frame, which they're not doing. And then of course they're gonna pop in a frame and the sun's gonna go back behind those clouds. So this is, we're just freezing. What we're doing is we're just freezing on a windy hill. Now when it comes to handling on the GFX 100S, Jordan did a very good job and I, I agree with a lot of the stuff he was saying. The grip on this is excellent, it feels very secure, I like the way my thumb wraps around just underneath the quick menu button, I never feel like I'm going to lose my grip on it. Uh, I do like the fact that the camera is lightweight and compact, I mean this is really very reminiscent of sort of a full frame SLR in weight and size, 900 grams, I mean that's less than half a knocked. Admittedly the lenses in some cases can get a little bit bulky but for the most part I've got something that really isn't a burden to carry around. You know the overall handling, the dials, the new AF joystick, I actually prefer this to the GFX 100 body just in terms of the overall feel of everything and the controls. Now one thing though the GFX 100 had that Jordan pointed out was a vertical grip built in. I'm happy that this camera doesn't have a vertical grip, I want my camera to be as lightweight and compact as possible, I've always been a hand over the top of the camera kind of guy, I don't like to use vertical grips, so this camera is perfect for me. Now Jordan is lamenting that there's no optional grip that you could put on here like most camera systems have and I would say you know although that sounds reasonable to hell with optional grips, damn them all, uh, they're horrible and everybody should put their hand over like this or occasionally like this is acceptable as well. I like the customizability of this camera, we've got four function buttons that are customizable, you've also got those terrible swipe up, down, left, right customizable options and then you can go further and customize things like the auto exposure lock button, the AF on button, the dial push button so you know I feel like I've got what I need to set this camera up the way I want it to be. Now Jordan didn't really love the position of the AF on button and that's fine because I guess his thumbs are weird but in my case I actually find this to be totally comfortable. It doesn't feel like a very solid press, I will give you that, it doesn't feel like you're clicking it in at all but it is in a good position, my thumb lines up there naturally, I'm not hitting anything else and overall I do find the the handling of this camera to be very comfortable, uh, very familiar, and uh, yeah, I think it'll work for any kind of shooter. 
So let's talk about displays. I want to start with the EVF first. I mean, unfortunately, this EVF is a downgrade from the GFX 100. So first off, we're down to 3.69 million dots. Now that's not bad, but we are talking about a very high resolution camera and it does help to have a really clear EVF just so you can see that detail. But the real issue here for me personally is that our, our frames per second refresh rate on the screen isn't great. So if I performance boost mode for frames per second on this display, I get 85 frames per second. That's fair to middling at best. But if I want maximum clarity and resolution, well then unfortunately my frames per second drops to 50 frames per second, which isn't gonna do very good if you're trying to follow movement, action, and sports. So long story short, you really do wanna set the right performance boost mode for still life, things that aren't moving like landscape, or architecture and then going and switching it to the faster frames per second if you're doing something like sports and action. The other thing of course that you will notice is unlike cameras like the GFX 50S or the 100, we do not have interchangeable EVF. So you don't have an option to ever upgrade this or change it. You are stuck with what we have on here. Now the LCD back panel is another story. I do like this. Touchscreen panel, 2.36 million dots. It does give you both vertical tilt as well as Fuji sort of, you know, one axis sideways tilt. But again, that does give you options if you want to do low to the ground stuff. It's nice on a tripod. And so overall, really nice LCD back panel. Now you also notice you have an LCD on the top. You know, this is a very Fuji kind of thing to do. You can have it as virtual dials. You can have it as a histogram or just an info head heads up display and I do like that feature. I do miss it though that it's not on the back like the GFX 100. I loved having a histogram always visible right below my screen. I could just take my eye away, look at the histogram, go back. That was really convenient but at least you can still do that up here and of course there's no space for it under that LCD panel on such a compact body. So when Jordan first got to play with the Fujifilm GFX 100S and I was stuck at home by far the thing that I was most jealous about missing out on was the new nostalgic neg film simulation mode. So this really gives you not really more contrast and Provio, but it's a good punchiness, but with a very nice warm palette, really accentuating orange and yellow tones, changing blue tones. I did some portrait stuff with it. I really liked it for that. And it's just a nice subtle shift with warmer tones, really, really cool film simulation mode. So there's like, five or six I like. Now when I played with cameras like the GFX 50R, I wasn't blown away because although the sensors on those are excellent, you know, you're starting to really end up competing with a lot of the other full frame cameras like the A7R 4 for example. So first off, I think that the 100 megapixel sensor we have in here really does justify the higher cost and give you something unique compared to a full frame camera. Now this is a known commodity in this sensor. It's the same one you'll find in the GFX 100. I mean, crazy resolution, tons of dynamic range. I mean, this is an awesome sensor for bright sunny days, landscapes, hard contrast light, or just anytime you want to really be able to push shadows. I did a pixel peep shot for you guys from about 75 yards away of this very thing here. And again, you can zoom right in. I mean, tons of detail. Now this camera does also shoot 16-bit RAW as well as 14-bit RAW. Honestly, I would still shoot this on 14-bit RAW. We're getting tons of image quality. The difference is basically negligible and the 16-bit is a much larger file size, really slows this camera down. If I shoot 16-bit RAW plus JPEG, which I love to do, uh, I'm going to get about seven shots before this blocks up and slows down. Whereas when I shoot this on 14-bit, it makes a lot more sense because I'll get about 15 shots in a row, which is at five frames per second mechanical shutter, three full seconds. Not bad for a high-res camera like this. Now while we're on the topic of high resolution cameras, Fujifilm does now allow their 100 megapixel cameras to do a multi-shot mode. Now this could then give you from 16 shots a 400 megapixel image, which would be pretty insane. Now, I will say first off, it does do 16 shots. Even in the shortest interval of time, it is still fairly slow, okay? So this cannot move. And I know the guys at dpreview.com are having a hard time, even in their studio on a tripod, getting a really usable 400 megapixel file. I mean, you will notice higher resolution, but taking advantage of every single megapixel, that can be pretty tricky. Unfortunately, the GFX 100S does not build 
of the file in the camera. So although I can see all 16 shots that it took and I can evaluate each one separately, I can't look at the amalgamation of all those files and make sure that it's sharp before I leave the field. And so that's a little bit inconvenient. It's the same as the Sony a7R 4 You don't have the option of looking at it in camera. So you have to take it back home to the computer, put it in post and hope for the best. So it's time to talk about the IBIS unit that's built into this camera. I've been really enjoying it, but you know, it can be a little confusing. We're talking about how image stabilization works and really what shutter speeds you can get away with handheld because it varies based on the camera you're using and the lens. Now, if I'm normally using a lower resolution camera, like a 24 megapixel full frame, I can get away with much slower shutter speeds and still basically get that full resolution. My window of error is much larger. But when you move up to cameras that are 60 megapixels, or in this case, 100 megapixels, you need to be more stable to maximize that resolution. There's no point having 100 megapixels if you're not getting all of them. So in that regard, I am very impressed with the Fuji GFX 100S's image stabilization system. And I would say for me, what I'm getting is about one over my focal length as a good rule of thumb that's working. So I am using two lenses on this camera. I've got the 110 millimeter lens. And if I'm shooting that handheld, I'm finding, yeah, if I'm around 125th of a second, roughly, I can handhold that and get full resolution very well. I did some shots indoors as well. You can see here at 80th of a second and some I had to throw away, but I could still pull off some nice sharp photos where I feel I'm getting all the resolution the camera offers. Now, I also have a 30 millimeter lens here today with me. And in that regard, I can do 30th of a second and still comfortably get good handheld results. So maybe not as far as you can push a 24 megapixel camera, but I'm getting so much more resolution here and it's working very well for the system handheld. I want to talk about autofocus. I'm going to start off by saying that this is probably the nicest autofocus that I've used on any medium format camera. I mean, the interface is very much like a Fujifilm X-T4. The tracking works pretty well. I mean, it's sticky if you've got a good contrasty subject to lock it on to. Uh, you know, we can't compare this against APS-C or full frame cameras. Those are still going to focus a little bit quicker, but that's because it's also very lens dependent what the focus is like. And a lot of these lenses are a little bit slow to focus. This 110 millimeter, for example, it is still a little bit ponderous. Some of the zooms do focus quite a bit faster, but as a medium format camera goes, as long as you keep that in context, the autofocusing here does a pretty good job. In particular, the face and eye detect autofocus was very effective here on this camera, which makes a lot of sense because I think a lot of people are going to use this camera for commercial portraits and you want that focus in the eye. You have to remember a medium format camera using wide aperture lenses like the 110 millimeter F2 or, you know, Jordan doing a lot of samples on the 80 millimeter 1.7. It's going to generate very shallow depth of field. And so you need that focus to be pinpoint accurate. And, you know, I took some portraits as well with wide apertures here, and I was very pleased. My hit rate was very high. For the most part, it always was right on the iris. Now, the other thing I want to say about this camera, um, autofocusing modes, because that shallow depth of field is there, I do often find when shooting wide open that I want to have very good select precision over where my autofocus is going to go. I do use tracking a lot, but I actually have been finding myself using the small single point a lot. And so I think it is worth absolutely dedicating a button to bring up your autofocus mode so that you can change that very quickly. Jordan here to talk about video recording with the GFX 100S, and I really covered this in our previous video. The main takeaway is this is actually a better video camera than the GFX 100. You've got a longer time before overheating and the stabilizer works better for a lot less money. This is the best medium format camera if you're also interested in doing some video capture. But the one thing I wasn't able to test was the ProRes RAW recording because that always seems to be in flux right now. And at the time of this video release, here's where we're at. You have control over ISO and exposure adjustment, but we still don't have a proper white balance adjustment in the RAW controls. And having that is one of the biggest reasons I would choose to shoot RAW. Now, another thing we're starting to see with a lot of new cameras now is the option to record either ProRes RAW or B-RAW out to a Blackmagic video assist. Now, right now we only have ProRes RAW output if you're looking for compressed RAW out, but Fujifilm is one of the best companies out there in terms of continually giving really meaningful firmware updates. So hopefully that's something that we'll see in the future. Right now though, very capable medium format camera for video. All right, we are going to conclude by this incredibly windy reservoir. I'm sorry about the audio, but uh, you know, we had a great day today and really I'm going to say I'm happy I got out here finally with the Fujifilm GFX 100S because this is probably my favorite medium format camera that I've used to date. 
you know, the 50 megapixel versions, I just never really loved. I mean, the 50S is fine. The 50R ergonomically, I didn't like, but I just feel like you're competing too close to the high-end full-frame mirrorless cameras. I feel like it's the 100 megapixel sensors that really shine in the lineup. Now, that brings us to the GFX 100, but that was always a really bulky camera. I didn't like the uncomfortable vertical grip. Although it does have some really nice features, I think that this does so much of what that camera can do for a lower price point and a more compact design. This is still a very usable EVF. You're also giving up battery life. They only give you one battery here. It's the same battery the X-T4 takes, whereas the GFX100, you get two batteries and it comes with it. And they don't give you a dedicated charger. They just give you a USB plug. But I mean, most of us have USB charging now anyways, and it is fairly fast. So you buy an extra battery, not a big deal. So I think the last thing to keep in mind is that the Fujifilm GFX100 is still a very expensive camera. Now I'm having a hard time justifying that camera now that this exists. I like this body better. I know that'll be subjective, but the image quality is the same. This does better video, and this is substantially less money. But let's keep it in context. The GFX 100S is still a very pricey camera as cameras go, and not everybody needs the medium format quality here. I mean, you have to decide if 100 megapixel files are really something that you need for your workflow. But if so, I think this is the best Fujifilm medium format camera to date. I really enjoyed using it. Now guys, do remember you can go to deepyearview.com. There's articles on this camera, and there will be a sample gallery. The links will be in the description below, so please check those out. Uh, please subscribe while you're here. Thanks for joining us out in this very windy Alberta day and we'll see you very soon.